dancing is so much fun, it doesn't feel like I'm busy when I dance. I want to like perform, I want to go on stage and that means something. There is a whole thing about the aesthetic body in ballet, but in the end, it doesn't have much to do with your skill. Sophie first started dancing ballet when she lived in Rio. She has since moved to Denmark and teaches the majority of the classes at Jusk Ballet Academy in Aarhus. Two years ago, she was diagnosed with autism, but she has been able to find ways to work with her diagnosis and move forward in her practice. I was extremely uncoordinated. I cannot ride a bike. I cannot balance on anything that is moving. I have an extremely difficult time with balance, but I know that I can focus on placing my feet in a certain way. I know I can focus on using these muscles and looking that way. And there's so many layers to it that you can actually do a lot, even if things don't come naturally to you. First of all, I'm going to say it's a little bit difficult to say what is my diagnosis and what isn't, because autism is not a psychiatric a disorder, it's a neurodevelopmental disorder. So my brain is just wired a bit differently. Something about thinking logically and planning ahead. So when I do have the time to, it, to do it, I, would, I like to plan things particularly to the music I'm using. So I'll listen to the music and I'll plan steps that fit in exactly with that piece of music. That's the difference between a quality class and just a, an okay class. At least you can feel it when you're doing the exercises. It has also affected me in terms of getting very tired after teaching. And so I've actually had to talk to my students about this, that it's not a question of, oh, it's rude, be quiet. It's a question of, I do not function if everybody's talking at the same time. So at some point, if I need to find a song on a CD and everybody starts talking, I will take 10 minutes to find that song because my brain just kind of <laughs> shuts down, you know? It's a little bit of a shame that it feels like you know, you, you can never do anything 100% because the circumstances don't allow it somehow. Kim is 28 years old and currently lives in Aarhus. She has danced ballet on and off since she was little, but she moved to Denmark from Germany eight years ago to study biology. First year, we had a botany class and I just loved it. I loved learning about the plants. I have a book um, of flora. Um, I usually take outside with me to, in spring and summer and then I just practice all the plants and look them up if, it's, if I remember right. <laughs> the Botanical Garden in Aarhus is a sanctuary that Kim visits often. I've always lived really close to this botanical garden. Um, so instead of going into the forest, I got at home where my mom lives. I just went here to be outside, be in the green, look at the plants and trees. It gives me calmness to be here. Her interests in plants roll over into her talent of painting. Her preferred medium is watercolor. She occasionally gets commissions for her work. I will also want to be a children's book illustrator. That was also one of my, always one of my dreams. Um, and these mushrooms were actually one of the ideas I had for a children's book. I just loved painting always. I wanted to be, work at Disney when I was young. <laughs> That's why I started painting. Kim has many interests and hobbies, but one that she always comes back to is ballet. Because of her busy schedule, she might only make it to one class a week so she often has to practice at home to stay in shape. When I was writing my master's thesis, I, always, I was always looking forward to coming to ballet class because I knew that I could just um, shut off my brain and dance. Um, and it was, uh, I hated it during the lockdown that I couldn't get out to dance because it was always the one part of my week I was looking forward to, no matter how stressed I was. <laughs> not thinking about all the stuff I have to do, I have to think about normally. It feels like I've always been dancing ballet. It just feels like, like being home. I have always had a pretty busy um, 
schedule outside <laughs> in my, in my, during my week. And in ballet class, that's the structure. We warm up on the bar and we have the turns and the jumps and it's, it's structured and the music is nice and relaxing <laughs> most of the time. Nikolai is from Denmark. He started ballet to add a skill to his theater background. He tries to make it at least twice a week. I love ballet, it's just so aesthetically like pleasing. I'm still kind of a beginner, so I have a lot of things to think about. You have to think much about how you how your posture is and 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 it just looks so elegant. And, and so easy, but really hard working behind the fence in, in some ways. I want to develop my skills in for ballet, so I, like, I have to do some homework if I want to develop. Sophie teaches a diverse group of people four to five days out of the week. Most of them are not training to become professional. She invests a lot of her time to making sure her students are learning while also having a safe space to come to. One of the things I like the most about teaching and specifically teaching recreational dancers, I mean, I've never taught professionals, but I imagine it's very different. Um, it's the fact that people are here without the ambition to become a professional dancer and they come with many different levels of skill in different things, you know, you can't expect everybody to be good at everything. So it's a lot about working with people's individual qualities and their personalities and also seeing the progress over time. Up, move. Up, move. Yeah. Like every week you come in and you see them for this hour and, and you become quite close to them in a way you see them grow up. I like somehow watching these people grow and seeing them develop and become friends and knowing that I was part of how that was brought into their lives. A few teachers might have inspired me a lot and I want to be there for my students like these teachers have been for me and also in the ways that people have not been for me. Knowing that I can actually make them better even if I can't do something myself, I think that's like, that's what teaching is about, in a way. Recreational dancers are not immune to stereotypes that are associated with professional dancers. Many potential dancers may believe they can't start because they are too old. When I started, I think the age range was from me. I was 15 to over 60. Uh, we had some women over 60 who were dancing at the class. And one was really good, but the other was just a beginner and she still had a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, this is a very interesting thought that people have here in Denmark, that you dance to become a professional, because, I mean, it's really not a lot of dancers who become professional dancers, you know, and, and it doesn't mean, I mean, you wouldn't go to football class only to become professional, or to swimming only to become professional. So I think it's this idea that, that you have to become a professional and you're too old if you're an adult, or you're too old if you're 15, very narrow-minded to take something and limit it to this very specific thing. <laughs> Often ballet dancers are associated with the image of being thin and tall. People always think all oh, the everyone who dances ballet is like slim and tall and a girl of course <laughs> but that's really not true. You don't have to be a, um, a certain type of, type of body type. Uh, everyone can dance ballet and we have really slim girls, but also bigger girls, and they dance really good as well. Professionals have been pressured to lose weight for certain things, and that's not what we deal with here at all. But of course, I mean, people who grow up doing ballet are growing up in front of a mirror, in tight clothes, <laughs> so you can't hide much. So I would say it's something everybody faces to one extent or another. And it can also be very challenging to come into class and everybody else is thin and you're not thin, or you know, Everybody gets self-conscious, even people who have the perfect ballet body, you know, as people might see it. 
it is easier if you're lighter, of course, but you're really working with your own body weight. So if you're strong and you, if you're heavy and you work hard and your strength builds up, it's not a problem. Nikolai often gets criticism when he tells people he's practicing ballet. People don't see it like masculine. They all see like, oh, you're a ballet dancer, you're a male ballet dancer, then you have to be like the ballerinas. And we're not. Like, it's a lot about all the male professional dancers, uh, ballet dancers, are really ripped, like real buff. <laughs> they, I, I, I think some of them are, are mo uh, one of the most manly men I have like seen. And I don't think, wh why is that feminine? And like, wh why it has to be feminine and, and stuff? So I have a lot of pushback there. Sophie often struggles to keep the younger boys interested in ballet. I've taught two little boys and they usually stop because they don't want to be the only one or because the others at school find it funny, you know, and like make fun of them and it's really sad in a way. When I tell my little ones Sean is a ballet, was a ballet dancer, they, they're shocked. And then I take them outside into the corridor and show them pictures of him dancing and they're like, what? He dances ballet, and I say, yes, he's my teacher. You have to like be realized, I have to ignore this when I tell people because they will probably say you're gay, and they will. If you see me gay, then just do that, but I know I'm not. And that's the way to do it, because you, you can't just stand and argue with them because then they put this up and this, and then you just think you're stupid, and then we're both angry. Accessibility to ballet schools in Denmark can be a struggle. Unreliable transportation, the limited number of schools, and lack of teachers can all affect someone interested in starting ballet. But it also impacts the ones who teach the classes. There's a focus in Aarhus at least. The tram that goes to the center isn't late. The trams that go to the outside of Aarhus are constantly late and, and under-prioritized. So the timetables are, are messed, like you have buses and trams leaving at the same time, so that if you don't catch any of them, you need to wait like a full hour to get another one. So that's contributed a bit to me being, you know, stressed and a bit overwhelmed. You can either get to work half an hour before or five minutes late. Aarhus is the second biggest city in Denmark but it only houses two schools that primarily focus on ballet. You do have ballet classes at other studios as supplements, but it's really not the same because it's not, you know, taking ballet once a week at a studio with a lot of beginner adults and not really taking it seriously. Of course, you can get some movement and stuff out of it, but it's not like taking proper class in a ballet school over time. When I first moved to Denmark, I looked for schools and the only schools I could find were really expensive. I think it was the other bigger school I found back then and not the small school I found later on. It seems like it's not very normal to do ballet just for fun. But in Denmark, when I talked to people, a lot asked if um, I was dancing ballet at this big fancy school up north. and They didn't even know we had smaller ballet schools here in Aarhus. <laughs> um, so they thought I was doing it professionally, but... <laughs> It becomes very niche and it becomes like an elite thing, you know, and it's very interesting because I come from Brazil, a country which has a huge difference between rich and poor, but it's somehow still more accessible to watch ballet back in the city I come from, Rio, than it is here in Denmark. The small academy houses a diverse group of individuals, from young to old and from all around the world. Ballet is not always a competitive atmosphere, it can also be a community. Yeah, that everyone can start here and be part of the group dancing here. All ages are welcome, all body types, there's no pressure on what clothes we have to wear. We heard like we the, the, the teachers see us. There's no talent class, there's no like, oh this is better than, than this one or something like you have better feet than I have to give you more credit or something. I think that is a value that I want here because then everybody have a chance to like do something they want. Professionals have been pressured to lose weight for certain things and that's not what we deal with here at all. You know, you don't have to be perfect. It's okay to show your feelings. It's okay to have a bad day 
and it's also okay to be bad at something. It's okay that I'm not good at jumps, so or it's okay I'm not good at, at turns. It's that does not change my value as a person. Thank you.